In this video, we're going to look at how to solve quadratic inequalities. Now, we've seen something called linear inequalities before. So if I had, for example, 2x plus 1 is less than 5, that's known as a linear inequality. A linear inequality is just one where there's an x term and maybe some other constant terms, but there's no x squared or anything more complicated than that. Well, the method to solve that, as we saw in the previous video, is just minus 1 from both sides. We solve it as if it was like an equation, so we subtract 1 from both sides, then we could divide both sides by 2. And we've solved it because we've got x on its own, and this basically says that x could be any value that was less than 2. But what if we had a quadratic expression? So a quadratic expression, so we have an x squared, so we had say x squared plus 3x plus 2 is greater than zero. How do we solve this? So this is a quadratic expression and hence this is known as a quadratic inequality. Now step one is to ensure that you have zero on one side. So step one, ensure zero on one side. And in this particular question, zero is on one side, so we don't need to do that. Uh, step two is to factorize the left-hand side. Now, the way we factorise a quadratic expression is we find two numbers which add to give the middle number there the coefficient of x, i.e. the 3, and they've got a times to give the last number there the 2, the constant term. So what numbers add to give 3 and times to give 2? Well, they're 2 and 1, and that means we can factorise it like x plus 2 and x plus 1. And if you haven't done factorising quadratic expressions before, please make sure you watch the video on that first. So we've now factorised it, we've done that step, and this is where the complicated bit gets in. What we do is, step three, is to sketch the quadratic. So we want to sketch y equals this. And again, I have a separate video on how you can sketch a quadratic equation. So if we're sketching y equals to x plus 2, x plus 1, we're interested in where it intercepts the x-axis. So where it intercepts the x-axis, the y-value would be 0. Anywhere on the x-axis, the y-value is 0. So if 0 equals x plus 2 times x plus 1, remember if two things multiply to give 0, either that 0 or that 0. So if x plus 2 is 0, x would be minus 2. So we've got minus 2 here. And if x plus 1 was 0, we get x is minus 1. So it goes through those two points, and we know that if it's a positive quadratic, because it's a positive number in front of the x squared, it's going to have a smiley face shape. So a smiley face shape going through these two values here. And we don't actually need the y-intercept for the purposes of solving this. Now what we've done, if we sketch y equals this, so therefore this thing here is y, we're saying y is greater than zero. Now let's look at this line. What parts of the line is the y value greater than zero? Well, the y value is greater than zero here. You can see the y is positive in all parts of this line, so I'm going to just bold it up. The y value is negative down here. We can see this is a negative y region, and the y value is also positive here. And then, these bold bits of the line, what can we say about x on each of those bits of the line? So if we're anywhere on this line, what can we say about the x value? Well, the x value here is minus 2, and then anywhere across here, the x value is decreasing. So we could say that x is less than minus 2 in this region. So we've got x is less than minus 2. Or x could be in this region as well. So or, well, x would be minus 1 here, and as we go across this line, the x value is increasing. So x could also be greater than minus 1. And that is the final solution to this. And we could try it out if we wanted. We just need to choose a value of x which is either less than minus 2 or greater than minus 1. Let's just say we chose 0, because 0 is greater than minus 1, isn't it? So if we put that back into here, we substitute it back in, we've got 0 squared plus 3 times 0, that's 0 so far, plus 2, so that whole thing is 2, and 2 is greater than 0. That's true. Let's do a similar one. If we had, say, x squared minus 5x plus 6 is less than or equal to 0. We've already got 0 on one side, so we do step 2, which was to factorise it. So we need two numbers that add to give minus 5 and times to give 6. So what are those numbers? Well, what numbers multiply to give 6? You've got 3 times 2 gives you 6. 
but they can either both be positive or they could both be negative. Uh, and in fact, they are going to both be negative, so they add to give a negative number. So it's minus 3 and minus 2. And now we've done step 2, so we're now on to step 3, which is to sketch it. So if I do a quick sketch, the x-intercepts, if x minus 3 is 0, you've got x is 3. If x minus 2 is 0, x is 2. And then it's a positive quadratic, so it looks like that. Now, if y is equal to x minus 3, x minus 2, we're interested where this thing, i.e. y, is less than or equal to 0. So what parts of this line is the y value less than or equal to 0? Where's the y value negative? Well, it's this part of the line here. If I bowl this up, you can see this is the part of the line where the y value is negative. So what can you say about the x values in this region? We can see that x has to be between 2 and 3. And the way we write that is x is between 2 and 3. Three. And notice that this has to be consistent with that. If that's less than or equal to, that also has to be less than or equal to. Compare that to the previous example, where this is strictly greater than zero, and therefore these also have to be strict inequalities, not using the less than or equal to. It's got to be less than and got to be greater than. Now let's do some more examples. We've got x squared plus 3x minus 4 is greater or equal to zero. So we factorise it. We need two numbers which add to give 3 times to give minus 4. Well, what numbers times to give 4? Well, 2 and 2, but there's no way you can combine them to get 3. Or it could be 4 times 1. And in fact, we want 4 and minus 1. So it's going to be x plus 4, x minus 1 is great equal to 0. Then we sketch it. Don't forget the sketch. A lot of people forget to do the sketch and then they get it wrong. Um, so x could either be minus 4. Remember, the quick way to do this is just negate that. So we've got minus 4. Or x could be, well, negate that, you get positive 1. It's a positive quadratic, so it looks like this. And then we're interested where the y value, because y was equal to this whole thing here, where is y greater or equal to 0? So what parts of the line is y greater or equal to 0? Well, the y value is positive here. All parts of that line, we're in the positive y region. And this here, so we get the two tails. And what can we say about the x values in this region? Well, x is less than or equal to, we've got to be consistent with that, x is less equal to minus 4, or, and it's important to use the word or, x is, well, you can see anywhere in this region, the x value is greater than or equal to 1. And the way to remember whether we have like this kind of case, or this kind of case, where we have this sort of betweeny type inequality, is that if it's a positive quadratic, if you've got greater than zero, you end up with the two tails, and you, can, you have the word or in between. Or if you're less than or less than or equal to zero, then you have the sort of in-between inequality, and it looks like that. So if you can memorise that, then you could just about avoid doing the sketch. Let's do some more examples. We've got x squared minus x minus 6 is less than zero. So we first factorise, we need two numbers which add to give minus 1 effectively and times to give 6. What well, numbers multiply to give 6? Well, 6 and 1, that's not going to work. Or 3 and 2. Well, 2 minus 3 gives you minus 1, doesn't it? So it's going to be x plus 2, x minus 3. Now let's sketch it quick. We've got a root of minus 2 and we've got 3. It looks like this. And then we're interested where y is less than 0. Y is less than 0 in this region here. The y value is negative. And then we think about the x value. So x is between minus 2 and 3. You can see the x value is between minus 2 and 3. So x is strictly between minus 2 and 3. And noticing, again, this is consistent with that. What about question 3? We've got x squared plus 2x is less than or equal to 8. Now, in this case, we don't have 0 on one side, so we need to make sure we subtract that 8 first so that it then becomes 0. So let's subtract 8 from both sides, and then that becomes less equal to 0, and it's just like a question we've had before. So we factorise it quickly. I would do it quickly for you. It's just x plus 4, x minus 2. 
And if we just do the quick way, it's the, if it's less than zero or less than or equal to zero, it's the in-betweeny one. So therefore, x is going to be between minus four and two. So we could quickly get that. But I don't recommend skipping the sketch step unless you're really confident with remembering which way is which. Let's do question four. We've got x squared is greater than nine. Now you might be tempted to just square root both sides and just do x is greater than 3. But the problem is that if x squared was 9, x could be 3 or minus 3. So I just recommend doing it in the normal way. You want 0 on one side, so we minus 9 from both sides. Then second step, we factorise it. Now can you see that this is a special algebraic form, it's a difference of two squares. And you remember that if we have a difference of two squares, that we have one plus bracket, one minus, and we do the square root of each. The square root of x squared is x. The square root of nine is three. We got that is greater than zero. I'm just gonna do a sketch this time. We got roots of minus three and three. Just sketch it quick. We're interested where y is greater than zero. So that's this bit, the y value is positive. Well, the x is negative, but the y is positive. And the y is also positive here. So it's the two tails. And you can see in this region, the x value is less than minus 3. Or, remember use the word or, x is greater than 3. And that is the solution. What about this one? x minus 3 squared is less than 16. Now I advise, if you ever have any kind of brackets in your expression, and it's not factorised in a nice way like this, where you have 0 on one side, factorise expression on the other side, you should expand the brackets out first. So I'm going to write that twice. And then I'm going to also subtract 16 at the same time so that we have 0 on one side. And then let's expand it out. We have x squared. We get minus 3x, another minus 3x, so that's minus 6x. Uh, minus 3 times minus 3 is plus 9, and we've also got that minus 16 there. So let's just simplify it. x squared minus 6x, and that's going to be minus 7 is less than 0. Let's factorise it. I will factorise it quickly for you. Um, well, two numbers at times to give 7, it's got to be 1 and 7. 1 and has got to be negative. It's 1 minus 7, isn't it, to give minus 6. x plus 1, x minus 7. And I'm going to do it the quick way. If it's less than zero, it's the in-between case. So it's in between minus one and seven. So x is strictly in between minus one and seven. Last example, we've got three plus five x minus two x squared is less than or equal to zero. Now this time we have a negative quadratic because the number in front of the x squared, the coefficient of x squared, is minus two. And I highly advise in such a case that you move everything to the other side such that the, then the x squared term becomes positive. So I'm going to add two x squared, so we're gonna have two x, positive two x squared over here. I'm gonna subtract five x, we've got minus five x over here now, and I'm gonna subtract three like that, and let's just write it the other way around. So we've got this thing is greater or equal to zero. So I'm just going to write it so this is on the left, like we're used to. The other way you could have done it is that you might know that if you multiply both sides of an inequality by a negative number, it reverses the inequality. So if I multiply this by minus 1, I'd get positive 2x squared, minus 5x, minus 3. And then because I've multiplied by a negative number, it flips the direction of that. So that's a nice way we could go straight from here to here. And then we factorise it as normal. So I'm just going to do the quick method of factorisation, but I have a video elsewhere where you can factorise this by splitting the middle term. So We've got two things that multiply to give 2x squared, so it's 2x and x. They've also got to multiply to give 3. Let's just try putting a 3 here and a 1 here. Um, and we need to make sure also we get this minus 5x. So what if that was minus and that was plus? Well, then we get minus 6x plus x, which would indeed be minus 5x. So it's going to be plus 1 and minus 3. So that's factorization. I'm going to do a quick sketch. So, if 2x plus 1 was equal to 0, then x would be minus half. The quick way to do it is to negate that, but then also divide by any number on the front of the x. So, it's minus 1 over 2. So, we've got minus half. Or, negate that, we get 3. And then we get this sketch here. 
and it's y is greater or equal to zero, so the y value is positive here or here, and we end up with x is less than or equal to minus half, or x is greater than or equal to three. Right, some test your understanding questions. I want you to solve x squared minus x is less than zero. Think about what kind of factorization you might want to use on that. It's not the ones where you need two numbers that add to give that and times to give something else. And then this second one here. So we've got x brackets 3x minus 4 is greater or equal to 4. Remember that you need 0 on one side first. So you may want to pause the video at this point to have a go at these. Right, now 0 is on one side, so we just need to factorise this. Um, now we have a common factor of x, don't they? So we factorise the x out and we get x brackets x times what is x squared, what's x? x times what is minus x, it's minus 1. And then let's sketch it. So either x is 0, i.e. here, or x is 1, i.e. here. And then let's sketch it, it looks like that. And we want the y value. If y is equal to x squared minus x, we're interested where y is less than 0. It's that middle bit. The y value is negative here. And you can see that x is between 0 and 1 in that region. It's strictly between 0 and 1. And this second one, we need 0 on one side. Let's expand out the bracket first. So we have 3x squared minus 4x. And I'm going to also subtract 4. So minus 4 is greater or equal to 0. Then we just need to factorise it. So two brackets, got 3x and x. And then what could this be? So it could be 2 and minus 2. So what if we had, if we had minus 2 there, that gets us down to minus 6x. And then plus 2, plus a 2x gives you minus 4x. That's right. And then if we do a quick sketch, so the x-intercepts are minus 2 over 3, so minus 2 thirds, or positive 2. So we get this sketch here, and we're interested whether y value is greater or equal to 0. So that's going to be here or here, and we can see that x is less than or equal to minus 2 thirds, or x is greater than or equal to 2. And that is the final answer.